Hi, Wayne here from Sears Park Direct. Today we're going to talk about what to do when your gas grill won't light. You're ready to start grilling, but your grill isn't cooperating. Let's start with the obvious troubleshooting. Make sure that you have the valve in your propane tank fully open. Turn the valve left or counterclockwise to open it. If the valve is open, check the propane level in the tank. If you're not sure how much gas is in the tank, check out this video to see how to check the level of fuel in a propane tank. Refill the tank if it's empty or nearly empty. If you try to start the grill and find the ignition system isn't sparking, check the battery if your grill igniter uses one. If the grill lights after you replace the igniter battery, then you've solved the problem. If you get through this basic troubleshooting without resolving the ignition problem, Try lighting the grill using a lighter to determine whether the burners are getting any gas. If the burner lights, then the grill has a spark ignition system problem. Skip to the section later in this video that deals with sparking failures. If the burner won't light using a lighter, then you'll need to reset the pressure regulator. The pressure regulator has an internal flow limiting device that prevents gas flow from the tank when it detects a leak. Sometimes this device trips an error. Here's how to reset the pressure regulator. Open the grill lid and then turn off all grill burners. Shut the tank valve and disconnect the supply hose from the tank. Now, turn on all the burner knobs fully and wait two minutes to allow the gas to dissipate from the manifold and gas lines. Next, turn all the burner knobs off again and reconnect the supply hose to the tank. Slowly open the tank valve and wait 30 seconds for the gas pressure to equalize in the gas lines and manifold. Now try lighting all the burners. If the burners light after you reset the pressure regulator, then a tripped flow limiting device likely caused your problem. Because a gas leak may have caused the device to trip, check all gas line connections for leaks. Shut off all gas grill burners and the tank valve. Allow the grill to cool completely. Mix a 50-50 solution of dishwashing liquid and water and brush the solution on all gas line connections. Refer to your owner's manual to see where all the gas line connections are on your grill. Open the tank valve and check all gas line connections. If you see bubbles forming around a gas line connection, that indicates a leak. Shut the tank valve and tighten the connection or replace the leaking component. Wipe the soapy solution off the connections after testing for leaks. If you find no gas leaks, the flow limiting device tripped an error. You can prevent nuisance trips of that device by following these three tips. When preparing to use the grill, make sure that you have all burner valves closed before you open the tank valve. Opening a burner valve before you open the tank valve can simulate a leak, causing the flow limiting device to trip. Open the tank valve slowly when you're preparing to use the grill. Opening the tank valve too quickly can trip the flow limiting device. When shutting down your grill after use, turn off all burner valves before you shut the tank valve. Shutting the tank valve with the burner valve still open can cause the flow limiting device to trip. If the burners don't light after you reset the pressure regulator, it may be defective or you could have a problem with the burners. Let's check the burners for clogs, corrosion, and alignment problems. First, shut off the tank valve and open all burner valves. Wait two minutes to allow gas to dissipate from the manifold and gas lines and then shut all burner valves. Remove the grates and flame tamers and examine the burners for corrosion. Replace any corroded burners. Check the burner ports for clogs. Use a wire brush to clear dirt and food residue from the burner ports. Disconnect the carryover tubes from the burners. Remove the cotter pins and pull the burners off. Clean the inside of the burner tubes using one of these methods. Bend a small hook on the end of a stiff wire like this straightened coat hanger. Run the hook through each burner tube several times to clear out clogs. You can also clear internal burner tube clogs using a small bottle brush or by blowing canned or compressed air through the burner tube opening. Once you've cleaned the burners and burner tubes, reinstall the burners, making sure to properly align the burner tube venturi over the burner orifice. Misalignment can prevent the burners from lighting because gas won't enter the burner tubes. Let's open the tank valve and see if the burners light now. If not, then you likely need to replace the pressure regulator and hose assembly. Here's a video that shows you how. Once you get that fixed, you should be able to light the burners and get back to grilling. Now, if you skip to this section because you were able to light the grill with a lighter, 
We'll check the spark ignition system next. First, check for spills on the burner and or igniter that could interfere with the sparking. Clean off spills or residue from the burner and or igniter. If your grill has more than one igniter electrode, check all the electrodes for sparking. This grill has an electrode on the side burner and one on the main grill burner. If only one burner isn't sparking, check the wiring connections between the spark module and the electrode for the igniter that isn't working. Reconnect or repair any broken wires that you find. If none of the igniters will spark, check the wiring for all of them and replace any broken wires you find. If you didn't find any wiring problems, pull out each electrode and check its insulator for cracks. A crack in an insulator can cause the spark to go through the crack to the frame of the grill instead of sparking at the burner to ignite the gas. Replace the igniter electrode for any insulator that has a crack. If the insulators are okay, then the spark module could be defective. Check for DC voltage between the electrode and the burner with a multimeter. With your meter set to check DC voltage, touch one probe to the electrode prong and the other probe to the burner tube. Then press the ignition button. If you don't measure any voltage, remove the spark module from the grill frame. First, remove the cap, battery, and mounting nut, then disconnect the wires. Reinstall the battery and cap, and touch one probe to the spark module spade and the other probe to bare metal on the grill. If you measure no DC voltage, replace the spark module. Once you figure out why the grill won't ignite and fix that problem, you can get back to grilling that perfect meal. I hope this video helped you out today. You can find links to any parts we talked about in the video description below. Check out our other videos here on the Sears Parts Direct YouTube channel. Subscribe and we'll let you know when we post new ones.